lifting up Jesus, opening his word from Australia, Denmark, Israel, Japan, New Zealand, Northern Ireland, Republic of Ireland, Singapore, South Africa, United Kingdom, Thailand, the Philippines, United States, and throughout the world. You're watching Morial TV. Hi, this is Tim from Morial TV and Morial Radio here with James Jacob Prash live via Skype. Uh, Jacob, one of the believers, had the question based on Romans 5, 18, verses 18 and 19. Does Paul teach universalism when he affirms that many will be made righteous? Exegetically in the context, verse 19 qualifies and explains the broader statement of the previous verse 18. Let's read it in English. So then, as though one transgression there resulted condemnation to all men, even so, through one act of righteousness, there resulted justification of life to all men. Take it on its own in isolation from what follows it, that would appear to support universalism. However, a text out of context and isolation from co-text is always a pretext. Let's read what follows it in the context. For as though the one man's disobedience, the many were made sinners, even so through the obedience of the one, the many will be made righteous. There is a big difference between many and all. There is a big difference between many and all. Uh, we cannot conclude all from verse 19. Uh, not only that, but in the wider context of the epistle itself. Again, text in context, we read that not all will believe. Paul tells us this. I'm not ashamed of the gospel. It is the power of salvation to all who believe, to the Jew first, but also the Greek. But all are not going to believe. He goes on speaking about how condemnation will come to all who disbelieve to the Jew first. The judgment of God and the curse of, because of the curse of the Torah, the judgment of God is on unbelieving Jews first because the gospel was available to them first by covenant. The consequences for rejecting it are on them first. With the privilege comes the responsibility. So we see that his judgment is going to come on all who disbelieve. Hence, look at in the context of the epistle itself. There is no possible way we can conclude universalism from the epistle of Romans. It's always text, context, co-text. Thank you so much for your question. My name is Jacob Prash.